So let us discuss. Now, the Super Bowl has come and gone from 0 to 100. What grade, what grade do you give Las Vegas as the Super Bowl host city? So I'm going to give Vegas a 99.9. I'm giving them a 99.9 out of 100. I've got soup, penthouse, and sofa. And we will combine all of these things together, and we will get you out of debt is what we're going to do. All right, so to kick off here, we we did briefly visit uh, Vegas at the end of last week uh, on our own. We were not invited by the company. We crashed the company's party there. But uh, we were there Friday and uh, Saturday schmoozing and hanging out with a bunch of other radio people and a lot of podcasters were there that you've never heard of, and uh, there were some big shots walking around doing their thing, and everything was relatively smooth. It was a silk-like Super Bowl, and you take a couple steps back, and you're like, well, this is what they do, right? This is what they are known for. This was not Jacksonville. This was not Sheboygan. This was Vegas. The menu called for soup, and Vegas served duck soup. It is a city built on the hospitality business. The University of Las Vegas, Nevada, Las Vegas there, uh, their number one thing that they're known for is hospitality, right? People that get into the hotel business, they like going to Vegas, uh, UNLV and whatnot. And people were pointing out the traffic on the Strip was bonkers. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, it's always like that. I go to Vegas a lot. Vegas is a suburb of L.A. It's essentially just a few hours outside of L.A., uh, and it's just a suburb. Uh, you drive there. Uh, you don't need to fly there. You can just drive there. I go to Vegas a lot. I have friends that live in Vegas. It's always bad on the Strip. It was not any worse when I was there, Super Bowl weekend, Friday and Saturday, than it's been on any other Friday or Saturday. I didn't see any more uptick in people there. Uh, did not. It felt normal. The only thing that was abnormal is the neon lights in Vegas had the Super Bowl 58 logo and the MGM had the Chiefs and 49ers logos on it. But outside of that, you know, the NFL is just another conference. It's just another conference for Vegas. And they treated it like just another conference. They had a, a fan zone at the Mandalay Bay, the NFL experience, which is just a big gift shop. And, and they, that's pretty much all it is, just to try to sell you overpriced hats, jackets, and coffee mugs and that kind of crap with the logo on it. Uh, but you, you had a few more private jets, right? The airport was full. They had to put planes in faraway airports outside of Vegas because the aristocrats that flew in there on their private jets, their PJs, didn't have anywhere to park. So you had that. You had more, a few more limos, a few more limos. Uh, but there were plenty of hotel rooms. I mean, I'm, I'm the cheapest guy around. The company did not buy my hotel room. I found a cheap hotel room. And there were, there were tons to pick from because the, the hotel was – there were endless amounts of room there. Uh, regular rates. Uh, restaurants had tables available. It was just normal. It was not, nothing out of the ordinary. All right, now furthermore, how likely are Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City to win Super Bowl 59? So to win Super Bowl 59, that's obviously that's – a, that's a big order – They've already won the last couple of Super Bowls. But to get to the Super Bowl, that's pretty realistic. If I gave you money and said, who do you believe in? Who do you think is going to get it done in the AFC? You'd be a dope not to pick the Chiefs to get to the Super Bowl. They're right now in the penthouse, and there's no one on the same floor as them in the NFL. The baseline for Mahomes since he got to the NFL as a starter is what? AFC Championship game? So if you go into next season, you say it's going to be Kansas City, maybe they're on the road, maybe they're at home, against blank. That's the baseline for the Chiefs. And the, so the Super Bowl is always lurking. It's a shadow. It's in it's in the shadow. The AFC's got all these big-name quarterbacks like Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. But in the end, the biggest nemesis for Patrick Mahomes is actually Joe Burrow. That's the guy. Right? Joe Burrow in Cincinnati is the guy you look at. You're like, well, that's a guy that could screw over Mahomes. Now you've got Jim Harbaugh in the AFC West. 
You've got Sean Payton. He's going to have a new quarterback in Denver. So that changes things if they get a good quarterback. The Raiders will have a new quarterback. They changed coaches again during the season last year. Antonio Pierce, there's optimism for him. So Kansas City, they, they will change the players. They'll lose some guys on defense. The defense won't be as good. They'll be better on offense. They'll add a receiver or two via the draft, and they'll probably sign somebody or trade for somebody. And now they have won the last two Super Bowls since they traded away Tyreek Hill, the guy that they couldn't afford to lose. And they've won both of them with rather ugly receiving players. Like the, the whiteout room in Kansas City is not very good. They led the NFL on drop passes, and yet when the games mattered the most, they, for the most part, didn't drop passes. They did not. They got rid of that dead weight, Kadarius Tony. They put him in the doghouse, so he's he'll be gone. He won't be on the team next year. And they've got to try to assume, we, we assume they're going to make things easier for Mahomes. This is the prime of his career. The, the next three or four years, Kansas City every year is going to be in the playoffs and in the AFC Championship game, and so they have a pretty good shot at getting back to multiple more Super Bowls in that time. And there will be additions and subtractions, as there always are. It is the circle of life, just like the Lion King and the NFL, the circle of life, the comings and the goings. All right, parting shot. On the other side, we analyzed earlier, podcast will be up shortly after this hour, Kyle Shanahan, who puked all over himself yet again as a coach, and he is the common denominator, Kyle Shanahan, and he is this generation of coaches, uh, the guy that can't get it done at the big moment. As a coach, that's Shanahan. That's Kyle Shanahan. And every generation has a coach like that. This is that guy. He's that guy until proven otherwise. So what needs to change for Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers? Now, I already announced hours ago, I would have fired Shanahan for his response about, well, you know, I'm very proud of what I did and the way I coached this game. Oh, no. That works one time you're below a lead in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. But now this is the second time, and I, I recall him saying the same thing the last time, maybe I'm wrong, but I remember him saying similar things that uh, I like the way we coach the game and all this stuff. Blah. So he's cha- had three, three different quarterbacks in these big playoff blown leads, and he's the one common person involved in that. Okay. So as far as what needs to change for Kyle Shanahan and the Niners, it is a jigsaw puzzle, and I recommend they look around and under the sofa and pull the cushions up on the sofa because they're missing the last piece They have all the other pieces to that nice mosaic on the jigsaw puzzle, but they don't have that final piece, and they didn't have it with Jimmy Garoppolo. Brock Purdy's not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Uh, And so you need to finish the puzzle, and you have this cloud now, and it's only going to get worse. If the Niners get back to the Super Bowl next year and play the Chiefs, and they have a double-digit lead in the third quarter, Everyone and their mother watching will say, here we go again. Here we go. Just like that. That's what they're going to be saying. And so Shanahan, until he fixes the glitch, he's got the fatal flaw. He's the the weak link. Now The NFC is wide open. Like the Niners are the class of the NFC. But do you really feel confident that they're going to be as dominant next year as they were this year? Because they're going to lose several players. That's what happens. They have... They have to massage the salary cap, and so some of those guys will be gone. They've got a bunch of big money contracts. They they can't pay everybody, so they'll have the revolving door there yet again, like Kansas City, and the teams are separated by by a few inches. I wouldn't be shocked. The Rams, assuming they make a couple of moves here in the offseason, will be a legitimate threat to dethrone the 49ers in the regular season. And then you look around, Green Bay is a team on the come with Jordan Love. The Cowboys are never going to actually get it done, but they're going to have a great regular season. And there's always that surprise NFC team that comes out of nowhere. 